All right, this video is about evaluating trig ratios using the unit circle, but this time we're focusing on how do you do it if they give you a negative angle. All right, it's very similar to what we did before. All right, so first of all, to find a negative ang angle in the unit circle, here's what you need to know. If you want to find a negative angle, let's say they give me negative pi over 4, okay? What I want to do first is find the positive version of that, okay? So I look at, look for, so I would look for positive pi over 4 angle. Okay, where's that? Well, that's right here, all right? And then you fold along the x-axis. If I folded right along this x-axis, where would it land? It would land right here at 7 pi over 4. Okay, that angle is negative. So what that tells me is that negative pi over 4 is the same as positive 7 pi over 4. All right, find the positive angle, flip it across the x-axis, or hamburger fold it, however you need to think about it. And wherever it lands, that's the positive version of it. Okay, and then you would use that coordinate pair to answer sine, cosine, tangent, just like we did before. Let's try this. All right, this one says find sine cosine tangent for negative 2 pi over 3. So I'm going to look for positive 2 pi over 3, which is right here. I'm going to fold it along the x-axis. Where does it land? It lands right here at, po at positive 4 pi over 3. So that's the same as positive 4 pi over 3. All right, so I'm going to use this coordinate pair down here to answer my questions. Well, we said sine yesterday was the same as your y-coordinate, so the sine is negative square root of 3 over 2. Cosine is negative 1 half. Tangent is always the y divided by the x. So negative square root of 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half. Keep it, change it, flip it. So I keep the top, change the multiplication, flip the bottom. Negative times a negative means it's going to be positive. The 2's cancel out, and what do I have left? I have the square root of 3. All right, so now I found my three trig ratios even though I had a negative angle. Let's try another one. If theta is negative 5 pi over 6, okay, I'm going to find positive 5 pi over 6, which is right here. Flip it across the x-axis, and where does it land? It lands right here. So that's the same as positive 7 pi over 6. Doesn't matter. Use this coordinate pair right here. Don't use that one. Use the one. Use the flipped version, okay? So if sine is the y, then sine is negative 1 half. Cosine is negative square root of 3 over 2. Tangent is the y divided by the x. Okay, keep it, change it, flip it. So I get 1 half, change to multiplication, flip the second one. Negative times a negative is going to make this positive, so the negatives cancel each other out. Twos go away. And I have to rationalize. So I'm going to get square root of 3 over 3. Positive square root of 3 over 3. Okay? There, we did it again. All right, we're going to do the same thing here. Theta is negative pi. Uh-oh. Well, pi is over here. If it's on the x-axis, how does it fold over? Well, guess what? That just means that pi, positive pi and negative pi are the same location. Because if you fold along the x-axis, you're going to end up in the same place. This is a unique scenario. Okay? So you're going to use that coordinate pair, the same as pi. So what is the sine? Well, the sine is always the y-coordinate, like we said before, so that's 0. Cosine is x-coordinate, so it's negative 1. Tangent is y over x. 0 over anything is 0. Cosecant, if I flip it over, remember the sine is really 0 over 1. If I flip that over, I have an undefined cosecant because it's opposite over hypotenuse, and hypotenuse is a 1. Remember that? Cosine is negative 1. If I flip that over, it's still negative 1. Tangent, we did this down here, is 0 over negative 1. If I flip it over, I have negative 1 over 0. Guess what? That is undefined if 0 is on the bottom. Okay? So if I flip that, this one is... Where is it? All right, so it's similar to one we did yesterday where you had zeros and undefined. You just got to remember that if zeros in the top of the fraction, it is a zero. If zeros in the denominator, it's undefined. All right, you try this one, and we will see how you did when you get to class. Good luck.